Hey, welcome to another episode of the Sega Holic. This is episode 78, Candy Cat Based Joystick Build Part 4, Controller PCB Hack. I'm going to be using the PCB from this Performance Super Pad 8 that I got from, I think it was uh, eBay a while back. Confirmed, this is episode 24. So yeah, save those generic controllers as their PCBs make great pad hacks. This controller has auto fire or rapid fire and this slow motion switch on the back. Again, we're just going to harvest the PCB and cord, but if you're uh, creative enough, you can actually uh, repurpose some of these other parts. The great thing about third-party controllers is that their PCBs usually have nice big test points or these great um, big traces like this one. This one doesn't have um, test points, but it does have nice big traces to solder on. Instead of using the shoulder PCBs, you can just get rid of them and just use the through holes that they're attached to. This is called a pin vise and drills holes and it's like a mini hand drill where we're going to be using a pin vise to make holes so we can provide the wires with some strain relief and uh, provide more stability. You can see I messed up because I drilled holes for all the uh, ground pads for the six face buttons. You don't need to connect the uh, ground to any or all of the face buttons. Use your continuity tester to verify which pads are ground. I chose the right shoulder buttons um, paired ground point as my ground point because it already has a through hole. Now all I need to do is solder wires to the holes that I made. Oh, and lastly, you have to uh, bridge these two points to disable um, the slow motion and the auto fire. Here I completed soldering the wires to the board and also using a zip tie to uh, provide strain relief for the cord using one of the holes that was already on the board. Next, I just do some solder cleanup and also trim the wires to the same length. Here is the pin alt for the harness that we made on a previous episode that hooks up to a 2L6B panel. The L designates the number of levers or joysticks and the B designates the number of action buttons on the panel. So we're going to be connecting three of these connectors to the PCB. All these are female connectors and the left one is the female connector for the um, harness that we made on a previous episode and whose um, counterpart is the connector shown in the previous diagram. The metal connector is a female made unlock connector. This is also made by AMP who also makes the um, universal power connectors. This is gonna be um, used as an expansion port 
for situations when you need, um, say, like the L and R buttons. Lastly, the one on the left is a 10-pin universal power connector and is used for the kick harness. Obviously, this is only going to be used when you put the PCB into a base with a 1L6B panel or a 2L12B panel. These panels would have your 6 button Street Fighter layout and obviously have the uh, added kick buttons. Looking at the diagram, you can see that some of the connectors share some of the same functionality. When this is the case, we're gonna have to daisy chain them. Ironically, this male pin is made for the female universal power connectors and is made for 22 to 26 gauge wire. The second pin can accommodate 16 to 20 gauge wire. You will need this pin to connect two wires to one pin. Here's an example of daisy chaining wire. Use 2.4L to crimp the conductor and use 2.4M to crimp the insulator. This is the female pin for the female mate and lock connector. So this is the Saturn PCB that's ready to be used in a Sega City panel. Many, many, many years ago, I modified this HTEC Dreamcast stick and put in a PlayStation PCB in here so I could play Virtual Fighter 4 on the PS2. Man, I think I was in a rush. But anyway, I left the um, Dreamcast internals in here and um, this was done so you can easily convert this back to stock. Anyways, we're also going to be pad hacking this PCB. So yeah, the Dreamcast HTEC stick is moddable without doing permanent alterations. If I remember correctly, I believe this board came off an Interact PlayStation controller. But you can easily solder your wire to the nice large test points. This is the pinout configuration I used for the PlayStation PCB. Anyways, time to test the PCBs in the panel. And one more thing I have to do is make the mods for the PCBs.
anyways on the next video I'm gonna be making the um, PCB mount and I'm gonna be demonstrating these PCBs in a six button panel and I'll show you how to um, cover up that hole if you have a blast city panel anyways um, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time Aloha Sega AM2. One, ready, go! Fight three, ready, go! Fight 